What's up guys, Nepenthes here and welcome back to another FC24 video. Today guys, we have got a little chat about Team of the Season, Team of the Season Live, which has had its ups and downs and uh, hopefully where we're going from here with EA for the rest of the year. And I just wanted to kind of get my thoughts out there about the start of Team of the Season because historically Team of the Season has been one of, if not the greatest promo, right? Team of the Year is always very good, but lots of people can't afford the team of the years can't pack the team of the years and i don't mean this year or last year i'm talking about like fifa 17 through fifa 21 and there was always a couple of huge promos every year where it would kind of change your team and as somebody for me who runs road to glories every year and this is my road to glory this year the arsenal evo rtg um i always looked forward to team of the season during rtgs because it was a great way to improve my squad with affordable very good players the difference this year is everybody has so many insane players already due to all of the SBCs that have been released, your Eusebios, your Hullets, your Zidans, your Sours, your Jezinhos, Best and Bruno Fernandes, whoever it may be. But also the amount of SBCs for party bag packs, the icon picks, the hero picks has really helped people upgrade their squads. And along with, uh, you know, but champs rules throughout the year and evolutions. You know, you can see in my team right here, we've got a fair few evolutions. And the ones that you see on the screen here, none of them are glitched evos. The only glitched evo I've got is uh, Walters here, who I've managed to glitch up to a 93 with some pretty crack stats as well. And so when Team of the Season Live was introduced or announced, I was really excited about the prospect of live cards, boosted cards, some fun cards. And I like the fact that EA have done something different, like genuinely think it's very cool that we didn't just have a boring old community tots like we have every year because it's outdated. And instead, we had something to replace it. And although we don't know what's to come, you know, the evolution from yesterday for the live tots, I thought was absolutely fantastic, like genuinely. Um, so although we don't know what's to come, there is a big divide, in my opinion, um, in terms of what's valuable for playing for versus what's valuable for grinding the menus for. And there's been years of FC 20... Well, there's been years of FIFA. Well, obviously, you know, this is the first iteration of FC. Or, yeah, F, what do we call it? Is it just FC? Like, we could say FIFA and you'd know what I mean. What do we say when we say FC? Who cares? Um, but in previous iterations of FIFA, there's been some years where menus massively surpassed gameplay in terms of what you could get and how quickly. FC24 has actually, up until the last month or two, done a really good job of actually giving you value for your time whilst playing the game. Now, you can have your opinions on gameplay one way or the other. Me personally, server issues and connection issues aside, I actually think this is one of the more fun games I've played because there are genuinely multiple different methods to play this game this year. Thanks to Playstyles and Playstyle Pluses. You know, we've got a few with three Playstyle Pluses now, which is absolutely amazing. And so it comes down to value for time whilst playing the game. And as you can see right here, I already have 10 of the Team of the Seasons from the live promo, including two of the better ones by way of Bisek and Soboslai. I've also got Mikel Marino, who's decent. And this Evo for them is very good. I mean, obviously, Bisek is very much expected to get a full upgrade. So you can upgrade him and it does stay live. It does say it there. One of the questions I got asked a lot in the 6pm video from yesterday was, if I Evo this card, will it stay live? And it does. Boost a live TOTS player with upgraded stats to two new play styles. Note that live TOTS upgrades will still apply to an evo version. So, first of all, it's cracking that you can get the upgrade on this Bisek. Because even without the other plus two that's most likely going to come, this card is he's crazy, right? This is a card that will get into people's teams. But so many people have got a Kanji Evo. They've got Bastoni Evo. They've got Paolo Maldini SPC. They've got Gold Virgil Van Dijk because he's just that good. But I still really like this. I really I really like this. This, is, this isn't a problem. I like the, the boost. My one complaint about this would be it would be so nice to keep the card design, wouldn't it? Like, just keep it as a team of the season live design. You know, they did it with Golasso. Um, I've evoed my uh, Ashley Cole Golasso card, as you can see here. Um, he was a 92 to start with. We evoed him up. He's still got the Golasso card design. So, 
it would be nice if they kept that. But that's me just picking. But where I've got kind of like I was I was super hyped for team of the season. I was super hyped. And come 6 p.m. on Friday, I was very, very excited. I looked at all these live cards. I was very positive. I really enjoyed the Evo. I thought the Evos were very good. Didn't think there was much by way of menu grinding. You know, it would have been nice to have an objective or something. But very, very quickly, and especially after seeing the price points of these team of the seasons, I got a little bit deflated. And the reason why is because, as I said at the start of this video, I am used to team of the season being an occasion where we upgrade our teams. And it's so mad to see that after literally after about five minutes out of packs, so many of these cards were dirt cheap. 20k, 15k's, even some of the better ones. Sobo Slyer, 140k is mad because not only is he evoable, he's also double upgradable. Liverpool won their first game 3-1, so he's one win down and three of eight goals down before he gets a double upgrade on this card. And that is going to be an amazing card. And of course, when we look at the fixtures for Liverpool, um, they've got their next fixture is in the midweek against Everton. So that's in just two days from now. And then on the weekend against West Ham, like a win against Everton on Wednesday, that's already his first upgrade done. Maybe they put five past Everton. I wouldn't say no. But I reckon by the time West Ham comes... Soberslide is going to be done, which means we're only seven days away. Five, actually, five days away. We're five days away from Soberslide most likely being double upgraded. And it's the same for Kai Havertz. Arsenal have already got one win of the two. We beat Wolves 2-0. If we beat Chelsea tomorrow, that's the second win done. Most likely, the goals won't come until Bournemouth. Unless, we, unless it's just a disaster class of goals against Chelsea, which, hey, it could be. It won't get go the upgrade there. And of course, on Friday, we're going to get Premier League team of the season. So I was a bit deflated because these cards were so cheap. And the, the main reason why I was deflated was because they weren't upgrades on the team. Like when we look back at my Arsenal Evo RTG, this is the only account I've really run in terms of properly this year. I've got a lowest rated RTG account as well, where I don't I only play champs qualifiers on there. But other than Kai Havertz, it's massively disappointing to look at this team and be like, wow, team of the season has started and nothing is, nothing's changed for me. And it's actually going to be a slow week waiting for Prem Tots. And it was just a bit disappointing. I was just a bit deflated at how team of the season has kind of lost its edge as a top end promo. And usually, as I say usually, what I mean is over the last three or four years, Team of the season has been the start of the game for a lot of people. It used to be like, you know, team of the season used to signify the end. You know, I remember there were some game cycles, FIFA 17, 18, 19, where after team of the season, oh, it was a hard slog, wasn't it, to the next game cycle. It felt like years. It was only a couple of months, but it felt like years. And those were the times where I used to play other games. Football Manager, Fortnite, F1, all, all, the, F, all the F games, I suppose. Um... You know, full guys, like literally all the F, guy, F games. And I used to play all these other games during that period. But over the last two or three years, EA have done a cracking job of giving very, very good end game content to allow people to build up their teams and enjoy themselves. What I think they've made a mistake for this year, and one of the things why playing FIFA at the moment isn't necessarily best time for value Best, best time for yeah, like value out of the game is because of the exchange. I can't explain to you how easy it is to put your fodder into these packs here, to open these packs here, then go and put the fodder from those into these two things here. First into 81 player picks. Basically, your 80s and below go into 81 player picks. Your 81s to 85s go into the 83 team of the week player pick. And then with the high rated fodder that you get from these, you're going to put it back into the exchange, rinse and repeat. And that's how I've managed to pack N, uh, 10 team of the season so far. And the exchange to play a pick, to team of the week player pick back to the exchange promo or like, like connection has been so, so easy because of certain...
playable objectives. And this is where the difficulty comes in because you build your kind of fodder up from playing the game, but you don't, you only need like top ups with it. Like I still have lots of fodder to put into the exchange. Like it hasn't even been difficult. I don't need to play the game to get more. But then you ask yourself, what's the point of actually packing the cards? And the point of course, packing the cards is to play with the cards, is to use the cards. And that's where it all falls down in FC24, as I think it did in, F in FIFA 23 and FIFA 22 as well. Right now, and of course, I appreciate I play this game more than most. I put more hours in than most. You know, it's not designed, I don't think, this game to be played for sort of 10, 12 hours a day. Not that I do that every day, but some days for sure. And when we look at what I've got available, I need to finish the warm-up cup for sure. I need to finish McGinn, who's just been out for a few days. The rest of it's daily content. And I'm two wins away from finishing the ultimate birthday champions bonus, which will be nice because it's an 84 by 20. It will give me a massive amount of fodder go back into the exchange, go back into the player picks, and inevitably I will end up packing some more of the team of the seasons. And then seasonal, there's nothing there. Of course, we do get a new season in three days. I'm quite looking forward to that, hoping that EA do something a bit fun and a bit different. And then for milestones, I mean, they haven't updated this in so long. I've only got four left to go. Um, Rivals is nearly finished. I need two more wins. And uh, Life at Friendlies, I need a lot. But that's actually quite interesting in Life at Friendlies that this year... They haven't given us as many as before. Um, and so when it comes to playing the game, I'm currently in the Elite Division in Rivals. Got my seven wins already for this week. I know, sad. Um, but I actually got them on Thursday. Um, and then we've got my champs run right now. I've got 10 games to go and I'm 9-1. and one. And when these rewards first came out, this is kind of the point of the video here is about the rewards. When these rewards first came out, I was actually excited. Because I was like, okay, this looks cool. This looks like a reason to play, right? Three team of the season picks from the um, rank one player picks. The tradable 8 5 by 5 and 8 7 by 2 which I do think are amazing. They're very good for getting coins. And then a live tot three player pack, which looks amazing. And I thought, what, where's my rank? My rank's usually rank 5 or rank 4. Rank 4 is if I sweat it and try hard. We get two player picks, which is great. And we get an untradable tots pack. And I was like, do you know what? That's amazing. Because obviously we saw these rewards before we saw the team. Now we look at these rewards and I think, first of all, I have I have seen 40, 50 reward sets from champs. Bisek has been the best player I've seen. I've seen one Bisek, one Zaha, a fair few Sob or Slides, and then it's just all those bottom feeder cards. And it's like, all of a sudden I'm now like, like this, this is what I'm playing for, this... I can go and get this easy just by doing the exchange into player picks into the team of the week pack back into the exchange and having all of that good content. And it kind of uh, deflated me a little bit again where I was like, damn, I, I want I want to feel like that progress. I want to feel like I'm upgrading my team through team of the season and it's just not happening. And so then when we saw the squad battles rewards, what have I got like silver two or something? Silver one. When we saw the squad battles rewards change yesterday because obviously squad battles updated i could not believe how dumb they were let me start you off in silver three right who cares about bronze silver three you get a team of the season lone player pack right silver two you get two ultimate champs max 90 guaranteed untradeable players two right silver two a silver one you ready for this? You get one ultimate team champions, max 90 overall guaranteed. So you get one less team of the season card for a higher rank. And then in gold three, you get yourself one max 90 team of the season card. So silver two, other than the tradable packs, which at this point in time, and this, this, is, this is where I think EA have kind of got a, a, a weird issue is that Premium Gold Players Pack, Jumbo Premium Gold Pack, and Premium Gold Pack, day one of the game, they're super valuable. Month one of the game, they have value. By month two of the game, these, these sort of packs are discard already, right? It's nice that they've updated the rewards, but they may, need to make the rewards way more in line with everything else in the game. And you could argue that instead of updating Champs, Rivals, and Squad Battles rewards... They've given the daily play objective, which gives you, you know, an 81 by 2 twice, an 80 by 5. Gives you the group rewards, like 85 by 5s. That's kind of like your, hey, you get this for playing. 
but people don't really feel that that's kind of like that doesn't feel like you're like if i played a whole bunch of champs and rivals i wouldn't feel like oh man i feel so rewarded because of the daily play i feel like daily play is like an added bonus and so i would rather they put some more things in champs and rivals and even just got rid of daily play you know just let me feel like i'm getting rewarded for champs and rivals because like i say these packs like so gold gold three gives you one these packs just aren't valuable compared to where they used to be gold one gives you one and i wonder if in ea's head they're like well you get a mega pack and a premium gold players pack whereas for silver three silver two you only get a premium gold players pack and a premium gold pack so that's why you get the extra tots but it is crazy that gold one gives less team of the season rewards than silver two the only reason why it would make any sense is if this wasn't max 90 then i'd be like okay fair enough you get two max 90s at silver two you get one at silver one and above but there's no cap on it you'll probably still only get an 89 or a 90 anyway but at least there's that chance and then when we're going to elite as well elite three guys offers one team of the season card no minimum guarantee elite two offers one team of the season card no minimum guarantee and elite one offers no one as well but Look at the rewards here. A rare players pack, a team of the season, and 22,000 coins. Whereas Elite 2, a rare players pack, a premium gold players pack, a team of the season, and 16,000 coins. Elite 1 isn't even better. You have 6,000 more coins in Elite 1, but you lose a tradable premium gold players pack, which I would argue is worth around a discard price or like lowest sale price, about 6,000 coins. So you don't actually gain anything by going up to elite one which is mind-blowing and it exposes this huge issue like with the champs rewards like with the rivals rewards like with these squad battles rewards where in actually playing the game you get far less value in terms of improving your squads and upgrading your team compared to just sitting in the menus for a fraction of the time like you know you play 20 games of champs let's say 20, 20 games of champs, assuming that every game doesn't go to 90 minutes because, of course, people get rage quits or people just leave the game early. Even still, for 20 games, you're probably looking at like four to five hours of gameplay in one sitting or uh, God knows what rank you'd get. But let's say you get rank nine in uh, in champs or sorry, not rank nine, nine wins. Who's getting rank nine? Let's say you get nine wins and you get rank six here for four hours, give or take. You're getting one team of the season player pick, an 85 plus, an ultimate pack, and a 50k pack. You can get the equivalent of this from grinding the menus in about three minutes. And so I'm not necessarily saying I want this to be like 10 50k packs, 585 by 10s, 1087 by 4s, 15 team of the season player picks, and 30 ultimate packs. That's ludicrous. But there needs to be like, it needs to be a little bit more valuable for people's time to play the game. And the other thing that I wish EA kind of paid attention to comes to the really cool Evo that they released yesterday. If you get a team of the season player out of a player pick that's really good, let's say you get Luka Modric out of your red player pick and you're mad excited because you're like, oh yeah, we've got that really cool Luka Modric. Let's go and put him into live team of the season upgrade can't because it only accepts the actual team of the season card design nothing else so also let's say you packed sob or sly on friday you made him red because you got your champs red card right we've still got the uh we've still got the um ultimate team champions red here that I haven't used yet let's say you go and make your team of the city you know you pack a team of the season you're like yes please ea i'm gonna make this kai have us red right guess what not that he's eligible anyway, but w w say he was eligible for the other Evo, he's now no longer eligible because he's not a live team of the season card. And it's just an oversight from EA that they're using the card design, not the card type. As, as like, you know, they, they know that it's a live team of the season card. In the back end, they can still make it applicable because a lot of people have missed out on upgrading some really cool cards because they got them as foot champs rewards. And so it's another punishment but actually like playing the game rather than playing the menus because you are way better off playing the menus to pack your favorite team of the season cards to then be able to evo it compared to being able to play the game 
to get the card that you know you will not be able to Evo unless you get to rank four and above where you get that team of the season pack. And then you have to hope that from that team of the season pack, you actually get a player that you want to put into the Evos. Now, don't get me wrong. As I say, I think the actual situation here with these Evos is really fun. I think there's a lot that you can um, a lot that you can do with them. And I actually think it moved to the price point of a couple of these cards um, because of how good it is. It is it is a really fun one. You know, Vasquez, banging SBC, maybe even one of the best value SBCs that we've had. Loftus Cheek and Bisek are two of the better options um, for this Evo. And th there you go. Loftus Cheek spiked up by 50,000 coins because of this Evo, which shows people's interest, right? And one of the things I've always, not always, one of the things I've kind of asked for and alluded to a lot this year, see Bisek's price as well. Yeah, look at Bisek. He went up nearly 75,000 coins at 6 p.m. because of this Evo. One of the things that would be so cool is why are we limiting again? Why are we limiting people's enjoyment of this game to one thing? Why is this Evo only, only completable one time? Why not let us do it as many cards are as available? Because we know for a fact that when Prem Tots comes on Friday, 99.5% of these cards, what a weird number to say, but 99% of these cards are going to be forgotten about because only Fernandez, Modric, Loftus, Cheek, probably, maybe Vasquez and Bisek as well. Only this kind of five here are still going to be competitive in people's teams because Prem Tots is just going to give people even more boosted cards. They're going to be way high rated than these. The fact that this is kind of like the baseline for Tots, for me, means that Prem Tots is going to be amazing. But give us this Evo five times. And I don't even care if the first time's free, the second time's 25k coins, the third time 50k, the fourth time 75k, and the fifth time 100k, right? Because all of a sudden, what it does for me personally is it adds value to playing the game without needing a reward. And this has been one of the biggest kind of battles EA have had over the last, oh, since SBCs got introduced, I want to say, but specifically since Foot Champs, and, and people are hungry for the rewards, is how do you get people to enjoy playing this game without actually giving them packs, coins, and players as rewards. And my, I personally think evolutions are the answer. Because if these evolution cards were all eligible, if, if I could pick five of these to upgrade instead, all of a sudden it allows me to actually experiment rather than sitting there. And do you know what I've done so far, guys? I've sat there and I've been like, oh, I'm going to wait. This, this evolution is here for until the 20, the 12th of May or something like that. Yeah, 20 more days there. It's there for three weeks, which gives us enough time to basically see who's going to get upgrades and who isn't. And then I'll wait and I'll wait and then I'll decide, oh, okay, cool. Vasquez is going to get double upgrade. I'm going to put him in. So I'll get the double upgrade off the live and then an upgrade off the boost as well. Brilliant. And by that time, three weeks down the line, we're going to be three more team of the seasons in which means even a 93, or sorry, 94 Lucas Vasquez, he is just not going to cut the mustard anymore. The only two players that will still be useful when this expires, I think, are Bruno Fernandes and Luka Modric. And so if EA just gave this five times, even at a, co a small coin value, as I say, progressively, all of a sudden I'd look at some of these players that I actually like the look of to play with and to test out and to try, and I would go and put them into the Evo. Probably wouldn't touch the defenders because I don't really care. But the Turland would be amazing to try out. The um, Santos would be amazing to test out. And then the, uh, who was it? The Yeah, this Mujica is very good as well. Marino, I would love to try this Marino out because he's very good in game as a team of the season. And then if he gets a couple more upgrades as well, it, it added, like that's where the value is added for me just playing the game. I don't need packs. I don't need coins. I don't need... Players, I don't need anything from playing this game. I will the value I will obtain is by trying these real cool new players that could well be compat competitive to the team of the year sour SBC, to the Bruno Fernandez SBC. And when you look at even uh, some of the other players, some of the um some of the wingers that aren't so great that are available, uh even Turland to a degree. Where have we got? What forwards have we got? We've got this David Costa. I don't really like his play styles, but 
he's he's there as an option. Th this Rafa Mujica is a great option, actually, because I love Didier Drogba in this game, right? I think he's absolutely banging. One of the reasons why I love Didier Drogba is he's big, he's got aerial plus, he's got relentless, he's got incredible shooting, and he's got five-star weak foot. This Rafa Mujica, even without any upgrades, with just this Evo and then a Hunter Chem style, all of a sudden I look at this card and I think, I would love to try this card. And if you get some upgrades, that's even better. But I would love to try this card. But do you think I'm wasting this one Evo on this guy here who's going to have... There's already probably about 50 players in the game that are comp comparable to him. And during Team of the Season, there's going to be 50 more. Do you think I'm going to waste an Evo on this card? 100% no. So if there was five available or something of the sorts, you know how like the Future Stars, they gave two for each position... If there was just more available, I might actually try this guy, Evo this guy, and then be like, guys, he is worth it. Or don't waste your Evo on him because even after he's been upgraded, he's still bobbins. It would be nice to be able to figure out who's going to be good rather than just looking at the Evo's tab and saying, all right, well, I've got a few days to try and pack Bruno Fernandes, Modric, Loftus-Cheek or Bissek. Otherwise, I'm probably just going to throw it onto Vasquez because Real Madrid have already got three goals. They've already got one win. They beat Barcelona 3-2 last night. So he's basically a shoe in for that first upgrade. So I'm going to pop him in. We're going to get this card. We're going to get a plus two on him. And he's just going to be absolutely amazing. And we've now missed out on the opportunity to play with multiple other cards. It's just really sad um, that that's the case. In fact, if we go to the Evo Lab with him. Do love foot.gg, man. They've... They've they've got some good things going on, man. They really have. Um, let me go to my let me go to my Evo Lab. Let me get that. Uh, where is he? Oh, it's going to be hard to find now with these horrible green card designs. And let's uh, customize him because he's going to look like once he gets that full boost. A couple more here, and a couple more here, and a couple more here. This. I wonder if they've got his in-game stats saved as well. It doesn't look like they've got his in-game stats saved, but look at this card. 95 pace, 95 passing, 96 dribbling, 88 shot, 89 defending, and 86 physical. He is going to be absolutely insane with the Evo and a double upgrade, but it just removes fun from every other player. And so I didn't really have like... An overall point here today i suppose i just wanted to share my thoughts on team of the season and how it it, it it isn't even bad it hasn't started bad i think it's just a little bit underwhelming and i i, I think i don't I, I think ea could do a good job of like balancing rewards to the point where you get rewarded for playing more than you don't because the menu right now the menu grind is just so easy and that in itself is nice, but it kind of like, it, it kind of does it, a weird feeling when you know you can effectively get everything you want. Like if, if I gave you every player on this game, every player, if I literally gave you an account where you had every player, what would you be playing for? Because you wouldn't be playing for the rewards at that point because you wouldn't need the rewards. If I, let, let, let's imagine a world where I give you every single player in the game and I give you a billion coins so that no matter what comes out, you can go and buy it. How much would you play the game and so and i think the answer is not a lot and so ea need to give us a reason to want to play the game without the rewards and evolutions are staring us bang in the face as a way to do it but for some reason they are so scared to give good things multiple times like this nuclear defender evo i honestly think it's good like it's so good there's a good like 10 or 15 players that are so good to do but you know what I would love to do? And, and again, this comes back to my uh, what I get of, as enjoyment out of grinding things up, right? So my Arsenal Evo team isn't the best because I don't have certain meta characteristics in certain players. Like, I don't play five at the back for what it's worth. I play four, two, three, one. Um, but Ben White is my right back, and he's just too slow, right? I don't ha like, I have Cafu that I could use instead. Cafu's banging. Ben White's too slow. He doesn't have any defensive play styles apart from block plus. He's only got one passing play style. He's just, he's not meta, right? He's hes not that way. There's a few decent players in here for sure. Like Kivior is absolutely banging. But do you know what I would love to do? Do you know what I would do 
And this maybe doesn't suit into like build into EA's ethos of trying to extort money out of everybody. But you know what I would love to do? I would love to have an England team, an Arsenal under 21s team, an Arsenal women's team, an Arsenal team, an Arsenal men's team. I would love to have the Argentinian Arsenal team because there's an Arsenal in Argentina. And I'd love to Evo all of these all of these players. So when that uh, atomic defender comes out, I could sit there now and be like, oh damn, that's sick. Now I can take my two silver defenders from the Argentinian Arsenal and make them both 91 rated with really key play styles and take them through a weekend league run and or even a weekend league qualifiers run. And it's another aspect of the game that I hate is that Rivals is the only game mode that's open all week and it's sweaty as hell. And I would much prefer to play qualifiers over and over and over even if the rewards were just Evos, right? Even if there were no rewards after the first run, but it's just nice matchmaking. Um, and build up, like, fun teams, right? And and then, like, wouldn't it be fun to just, like, take... Like, when Wrexham were, like, really pop culture and they got promoted, wouldn't it have been fun to take a Wrexham team and Evo them up and take them through a qualification run? And I think with Evos... I have been waffling way too long now, so I'm going to stop. I think with Evos, EA can do a great job of allowing people to feel rewarded now actually giving them packs and coins and i know people will say but people won't spend money with that but they still will we've had evolutions this whole year it's never ever been easier to get the best cards in the game this year without spending money and yet ea is still showing record profits and record sales for microtransactions which means the store packs are still getting bought in abundance which means Giving people a desire to actually enjoy themselves on the game does not deter them from still spending money. And you know how, like, uh, in Champs, when you complete your Champs setup, you get the evolution, and it goes into the store, and you have to claim it through the store. Uh, so this one, this one right here, once I win two more Champs games, I'll get my Ultimate Team Champs Pro, and it becomes almost like a player pick in that area of the store. EA, if they, like, I, I don't know, I don't know how many people actually pay for evos with fifa points let me know down below if you're still watching the video let me know down below if you've ever used fifa points on an evolution i never would i've used coins probably to my detriment i've probably used about five million coins so far on evolution but let me know if you've ever spent fifa points on evos because in that area of the game I'd, i wouldn't even think twice about spending fifa points on there i just never would but if there was an evolution in store where it was like, you know, like the like the formidable inform, but something, you know, just a blanket plus one. Like if we if they had an evolution section here, promo packs, provisions, packs for you, evolutions, and then there's like a store where you could just go and buy evolutions and they have like ten of them. Imagine like a plus one Evo, and you, it tells you what the Evo is here, and you can buy up to ten of them. And they're, you know, three hundred FIFA points each or fifteen thousand coins or whatever. And then then I could be like, oh damn, nice. Now I'll be like, let me go and just pop some FIFA points on and buy these Evos. And then you claim them through the same way that you do for the Foot Champs one. It, like, I like I hope EA are listening. I don't know if they can implement it this year, but I hope EA are listening because that would be amazing. But anyway, I'm literally just going off on a tangent now and not actually giving you uh, any decent thoughts about what I think about Team of the Season. But I get asked, I, I get a lot of people talk to me at the moment about how Team of the Season is dead. Uh, this game is dead. They're not enjoying it. The gameplay is terrible. And there are so many aspects of that that is true. But there are so many aspects of this game that is fun. And I think EA are just missing that one link to make it so much enjoyable for so many people. But for today, guys, for now anyway, that is going to be the end. I will be back in a little while uh, for the 6pm content for today. Thank you guys very much for watching. I will see you. Peace.